What's up guys? Um, there's no new information, but uh, IDK player Colin Hudson, uh, I did also look at Reddit. Um, so there's a couple of guys that talked about the information I covered uh, in the last video where I was really focused on the bad, the horrible marketing by 704. But um, there is a couple of tidbits of, of, I would say, confirmation or just uh, clarif clarification of, of some of the things I talked about because there were a lot of things that um, you still walked away from kind of confused because of the horrible marketing. That's why the marketing is so bad because even when you think they answered a question or didn't answer it, you still kind of walked away like not sure, you know. So they did sort of clarify some things. Um, so I'm, I just want to touch on that real quick. Um, the f first thing that, that I didn't really uh, see that, that was clarified in the uh, Colin Hudson uh, video was that, yes, the audio supposedly is improved, which I was expecting because they already kind of told us that they were recording new engine sounds at the Roush facility. So they confirmed something that, you know, I kind of was expecting, but it's good to hear, you know. Uh, also, the spotter is supposedly improved. Um, so those are positives. That's a very, very, very important part of the game that has really never been addressed by any NASCAR game. I, in my opinion, I don't think I've ever heard a NASCAR game that actually sounded awesome. Uh, so if they could ever get that to, to where it's noticeably improved, that to me would make a, it's going to make a big difference in, in the uh, actual gameplay. Um, the other thing is talking about the AI, which as you guys know is extremely important to me and I really believe it's going to make the biggest difference to everybody's actual uh, offline game experience. Um, so, he said they worked on it. He said that uh, they're going to be more challenging, which was confirmed before, but it's good to know. Um, and the pit strategy, they said they really worked on it. So, it's supposed to be better. And if those things really are better, the game's going to feel and... and it, it's just going to be a much better experience. I promise you. If the, if that really depends, and that's a big if, if they were successful in doing it. Now we've seen in the past where uh, a develop like whether it was them or your technics or somebody, they promised that something was improved, and then when you played it, it wasn't really improved. Uh, so that can happen again, all right. But right now we're trying to stay positive, and at least and, and that's. The bit, that's the first step, you know, just acknowledging that, yes, we worked on that and we, it is improved. Um, so we got the AI, we got the sound, and the other thing that they did bring up, which is a bit of a surprise to me, is they did say they tweaked the physics at all the tracks except the restricted plate racing. Now, do not expect a lot. I'm not expecting a lot. Don't go into this with big expectations as far as physics. Um, I think the lower your expectation is, the better. And if it is slightly improved, then that's gravy. Okay. Um, I didn't think they worked on it, but he says they did. And that they should be improved in all the tracks except the uh, restrictor plate, which they didn't work on. Uh, they Because they did a lot of work on it last year. And in... in, in in all fairness, the restrictor plate racing in the game is not bad, in my opinion. Of, of all the NASCAR games, that it was the best. Now, I'm not talking about in terms of competitiveness, because obviously the AI is too easy. But in terms of stability, in terms of uh, just, it's the most realistic pack racing that we've had in a NASCAR game, in my opinion. So I'm actually pretty happy with the, the, the restrictor plate racing. Just like I said, it's just got to be more competitive. Um, so I'm okay with that. And they said they tweaked it for all the other tracks. Tweak, I don't know what that means. 
you know, tweak means, I guess, you know, just slight improvement. So don't expect a lot. I think if you keep your expectations low, it'll, it'll, it, it might surprise you. But, um, so those three things are, to me, that's what makes the gameplay, the racing, you know, how the AI races you, the pit strategy, the sound, and the physics. So those are the, the, the main things. If you can improve on these things, you're going to have a better time racing. It's going to be, it's just going to be better. Um, how much better? I don't know. And I wouldn't expect a, a huge difference. But I'm just happy that they talked about it. They confirmed it. They clarified on that. And that's one of the reasons this marketing is so horrible that people have to keep going back and, and asking the same questions and getting them to kind of confirm and they kind of like don't want to give you a full answer. You know, it's that kind of stuff that I, I guess that's just the way they're going to do things uh, this year. Um, so I wanted to touch on those things. I don't think I really uh, was able to clarify on that yesterday when I did the last video. Um, and like I said, I'm not running away with this either and saying, oh, my God, all of this stuff is, gonna, is guaranteed to be better. But. I'm hearing what I want to hear. I know a lot of you guys are really down on on 704, and a lot of you are not buying, not going to buy the game, and that's fine. You know, I understand. Uh, you know, I get it. So I'm not here to tell you you should buy the game. I don't, I'm not going to do that. But I'm just telling you why I am supporting these guys, and I am going to buy the game. I do see enough there to get my interest. Um, and if I see things I don't like, I'm going to I'm gonna be uh, critical as well. But in all honesty, uh, yeah, they're still going in the right direction. And it's not fast enough for me, but still, it is what it is. Nobody else is going to come in at this point and make a NASCAR game. Also, NASCAR is working with 704 and they issued them the license. They're not going to license this game to anyone else not in the foreseeable future so you know you just gonna have to come to grips with this is what it is these are the guys making these games um and i don't i don't think they're doing a terrible job i just think that you know we've been frustrated for so long and i really think you technics did a big number on all of us that it's just you know we're still carrying around a lot of that disappointment and uh you know, it, it's just, it's tough, but, you know, I got, I, all we could do is keep pushing forward, um, and I am excited, this, you know, I'm, so some of this stuff, it's, it's good, it's good to hear, um, what else, one last thing about the visuals, they did confirm that, uh, you know, there is no day to night transition, which I talked about already, but I, I knew that wasn't going to happen, but I also mentioned that I did notice a, a visual improvement when it comes to the sky. I did think that they worked on the, the, the sky. I thought that might be the easiest thing for them to work on. And they did confirm that for tracks that are supposed to be, you know, for day to night, there really aren't that many. Uh, but they chose to go with a uh, sort of a dusk sunset kind of look, which I love. I think that is the best looking like, of all the screenshots I've seen, those are the best-looking ones, you know, where it's it's at dusk, where the sun is already going down and the sky is getting dark, but it's still kind of in, in that in-between. So they chose to go with that for some tracks, you know, you'll notice that. And I love that. I really think it looks good. And it's better than, you know, nothing. Uh, so... That's that. That's. I hope that clarifies a few things for you guys. Also, you could check out IDK Player and Colin Hudson's uh, videos on their channel. Um, so I want to give credit to them because whenever I get information, it's usually secondhand. It's from somewhere else. And uh, I think it's only fair to mention, guys. Um, one last thing. Okay. Uh, where was I? All right. I forgot. But that's, that's pretty much it. 
I'm going to Pocono this weekend. So if there's any news, as always, I'll be probably the last guy to talk about it. Um, if, if there is news, then I'll, I'll have to do it on Monday when I get back from Pocono, uh, from the Pocono race. Um, that's pretty much it. I, uh, it's mostly just clarifying some things that were kind of in a state of confusion. Uh, the, uh, the marketing is, it's always going to be a problem, I, I guess, until they decide they're going to do something different. This is the way it is. You know, we'll be nitpicking and, and digging for information and, you know, these, they're only hurting themselves because, you know, you, you're, you're not going to branch out to people that normally don't follow NASCAR or these type of games. They're probably not, they're just not going to even understand this exists. So, I don't know. That to me works against the whole idea of, of uh, expanding your, your, your consumer base and selling more games. But it is what it is. Uh, there's some good stuff, I think, that they clarified. And, and it is what it is. So, you know, I'd like to know what you guys think. Uh, and this is what I wanted to bring up. I'm not really sure, and maybe one of you guys knows uh, exactly how how far uh, does NASCAR work with 704. I don't think they're to me the, the their involvement is probably limited to licensing, which is why the the other thing they confirmed. But I already confirmed it in the previous video about the numbers. You're not going to be able to use other numbers because of NASCAR or whatever. Uh, that's a problem, and that NASCAR is also a big hurdle, you know, for these guys. There's a lot of things they have to get permission. They got to have the rights, the licensing. I don't understand why these guys can't just run any number that's not being used by another team. You know, aren't there more numbers available? You know, like I said, it's not a game-breaking issue, but, you know, people would like more options. So, I don't know. But, uh, I'm excited. I don't know what to, to say. I, I'm, I'm still uh, looking forward to the game. Those of you who don't want the game, I get it. You know, I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm totally, uh, you know, I've been there. I, I felt that way before. But, you know, they, they, they did enough last year for me to say, yeah, you know, it's a lot better than the first game. And I'm really hoping that I can walk away from this game saying, yeah, this is a lot better than last year. Because in, in, in all fairness, last year's game wasn't, I don't want to say it, it wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible. It was a pretty decent game. It just had, where it faltered, it was pretty bad. Like, the AI pit strategy and the how easy it was to win, that's a game-breaking issue. But it did a lot of things pretty well. Um, it, you know, that's that's how I feel about it. So, I'm we're we're in in this for the long haul with these guys. EA is not coming back, and uh, believe it or not, a lot of you guys weren't probably you're probably too young to even remember the the old EA games and stuff. Uh, EA went down the toilet towards the end. And there were people screaming for somebody else to take over NASCAR games. Uh, I know a lot of you guys probably aren't aware of that. Don't remember that. I remember that. So, you know, 2004 was really the the best NASCAR game ever. Just, I love that game. And there's a guy also on YouTube, a WinVow. I forgot the, it's like four digit number after the name, but... I'm sure some of you guys have probably seen his videos. He's doing a lot of, a whole series of uh, NASCAR 1000, 2004 career mode. And they're really good videos. He does, most of the time, even let the presentation of the pre-race and post-race play out. Doesn't always do it, but uh, those of you who haven't played that game, you should go go see some of these videos. At least you could see the beginning and the end of the race, and you could see the presentation and what made it so great. Uh, you got the the tail end of the Star Spangled Banner, the call for the uh, 
uh, drivers to start their engines in the pits. You hear the, the engines fire up. Then you see the cars pull out of the pits and go on the track and do the warm-up lap. They would go from the pole sitter all the way back right down the lineup. And, it, and they would talk about you, other drivers, how you were doing, wh where you were starting on the race. And then the post race, there was some always some presentation as well. You would hear the commentator talk about you, how you finished, and how you're running and, and stuff like that. I, that's what made that game so special. And uh, also the the being the owner driver, the the system was really really well done. You had to manage the team. You had to. I mean, I'm hoping we get most of that here. I'm, I'm just not expecting it to be as deep, but you guys should go check out some of these videos and you could really see what proper presentation and, and this type of in-depth uh, career mode, what that does for a game. Um, and don't pay attention to the graphics because if you haven't seen that game and you're younger, you're going to be in for a shock. When you see the graphics, you'll be like, oh my God, I, how could anyone play this? But you got to remember this team is about 14, 15 years old. So do yourself a favor. Go check that stuff out. Um, that's still the king at the top. And, you know, I hope that one of these games, you know, it's probably not going to be this one. But maybe the next one can really finally take over the top spot. Because that game's been on top for a long, long time. Uh, so... That's it. That's all I wanted to talk about. Um, I look forward to your comments and uh, hopefully we have some more news or maybe people can dig around and, and force them to answer more questions maybe uh, soon. But uh, that's it. So uh, tomorrow I'll be heading out to Pocono and uh, if there's any news I'll, I'll be back on on Monday. So, okay. Later.